You have only limited amount of time to fulfill each order you accept. And if you fail to deliver, people get mad like Eldari when they learn that some human aristocrat has made anal beads from a couple of their soul stones. What? Case number 16NOV2023, game name Anvil Saga. The developer states, Anvil Saga is a management sim with RPG elements where you take control of a blacksmith shop amidst the Hundred Years War. Each decision you make impacts the story and gameplay. Whether that's the case, we'll find out soon. May the Emperor's will be done. First things first, I would like to thank Pirojok Studio for granting me the game key through Keymailer and as always, let's start with the graphical options. In this game, you have as many graphical options as an Inquisitor has when deciding whether to condemn a planet to Exterminatus. You either do or don't. So, in Anvil Saga, you can decide whether you want to play this in full screen or not. That's it. As for the language availabilities, this game supports only English, Russian and what I guess is two types of Chinese. But, as is prevalent with indie games these days, it's all just pixelated graphics, so once again, defendants plead that such game doesn't need anything to fuffle about graphically speaking, and I have to agree. Sounds and sound effects are crispy clean, music in the background is fitting, although for longer sessions I would recommend to turn it off and find your own playlist, ideally medieval tunes for that matter. Uh, purely because, as with graphics, the choice of background music in this game is also limited as much as the free time of Bonesman trolled to Adeptus Mechanicus Factory. And if you are like me and can't push the music into the back of your mind like majority of sane people do, it can get loopy after some time. Story is there, but do not expect anything extraordinary. The Hundred Years War is raging and you are a roast beef for some reason living amongst the frog munches. Sorry, what's that? Well, okay, but only because you are my legal advisor, okay? <clears throat> the Hundred Years War is raging and you are an Englishman for some reason living in France who is trying to establish himself as a great blacksmith, filling the shoes of his late father, a blacksmith par excellence. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. There is a love interest for you, some friendly competition with the neighbor blacksmith Jean-Pierre, who is a real bankhole, and through the quests you will encounter a couple of quirky and well-known characters, all appropriately renamed, to abide the copyright laws that binds us even in the 41st millennia. So, if not for graphics, sounds and story, why would you play Anvil Saga? Well, mostly for the gameplay and mechanics, of course. The main game loop is simple and addictive. You are running a smithy and people are coming to you with all kinds of requests. To be able to fulfill these requests, you need to either buy ingots, which will cost you quite some amount of money, or you can establish your own mine, get some ore, smelt it into ingots, and then open up your smithy and start making money. You need money to expand the house, to hire apprentices, and to fluff up the space, because if your smithy looks like grot shit, you will attract only filthy peasants for customers with their cheap requests. So you have to throw money on the looks too like YouTubers pretending to be rich to make you buy their get-rich lectures, so then they can really become rich. Anyways, you have only limited amount of time to fulfill each order you accept, and if you fail to deliver, people get mad like Eldari when they learn that some human aristocrat has made anal beads from a couple of their soul stones. What? And when people get mad, you lose reputation, which plays big part in this game, because your decisions matter. Of course, some factions dislike each other, so appeasing one will piss off the other, pardon my French. Therefore, you have to find the balance between leaning too much to one side. In my first playthrough, I always told the Frenchies to fuck off and kept supporting the English, which after two years resulted in Frenchies throwing my fat colonial ass into the dungeon and letting me starve to death, as, as they should, to be fair. There is also the church and witches who dislike each other and bandits. Bandits have no real counterpart, but if you keep serving them and God sees you, depending whether they were French or English, you will lose reputation with that faction. And one last thing about the rep, it comes with positive and negative perks. Good terms with witches allows you to strike a taxman with lightning which sends him away and you don't have to pay. If the bandits like you, they will intimidate your staff so they won't ask for pay. But if you piss them off, bandits will keep stealing your furniture every month church will ring them bells overnight so nobody can get a good night's rest, and so on. Game has a story mode that lasts for about 3 years, during which you have a chance to win a heart of a fair maiden, 
beat your neighbor in Smith in a competition and see what happened depending on whether you supported England, France, witches or church. There is also a sandbox mode which is exactly the same as story mode except the story quests will be missing. But everything else is the same, even side quests which felt quite lame. But not all is well in the land of wine, fresh baguettes and guillotine. Not sure if this is a bug or intent, but alongside the workload you have to manage your people's energy level and hunger. Which is fine, but sometimes after they sleep or eat, apprentices would return to their designated post and continue working, other times they would just stand around like a servitor with wiped memory slots. And witness testimonies in Steam reviews also are calling out many bugs that the developers are fixing on the fly, but personally I had no issues whatsoever, never encountered any of the bugs that people are reporting, so I guess those were either addressed already or the Emperor really smiled upon me during my playtime. One thing that was getting on my nerves though is how slow the game is. Feels like everything is slowed down on purpose just to inflate your playtime. Main character is slow as and even when you put the game on double speed, it takes forever to go any place or do anything. And the sleep. Holy hair on the lemon rose ballsack, does it take forever for them to get their beauty sleep? As per the evidence E82, literally half of your gameplay time is looking at this screen. And this being a game priced at 1679, it seems kind of steep as you can literally finish the game in 3 hours. Wait a moment, I just realized something, maybe that is the reason for all the slowness, to ensure you can't finish the game under 2 hours and refund. What a brilliant move developers, oh you. But don't worry, what games lacks in speed of work makes up with speed of demand. In sandbox it is alright because you are only getting side quest orders, but story mode can be proper pain in the nougat hole. So many times you get swamped by side quest orders, even two of them at once, just to have some fuck face come in with a story related quest and you end up pissing off at least one quest giver. Absolutely infuriating. And I'm not the only one whining about this, so it's not just me being a boomer unable to cope with video game space, hopefully the developers will look into this very soon. Another thing that I dislike is that in story mode you have a yearly competition against your rival blacksmith but you can't choose which apprentice to take with you. It's always the same guy, the guy you hire as an apprentice the first time. Which means you have to make sure this guy is good at whatever needs to be done each year. Which I didn't know, so I made him my main smelter but year 2 rolled around and I was unable to win because neither my apprentice or myself were skilled in sharpening. I had another dude for that and I had no chance to pick him to come with me. Last year 3 was some woodworking introduced and I was fucked like a guardsman on his last magazine during a Tyranid invasion as my main dude was just a smith and carpentry was all done by my other apprentice. Quite an oversight on the development path if I may say so. Literally you have to play the story mode at least twice. First find out what is required of you at each stage, fail, the next run execute everything perfectly. And personally, I dislike that kind of gameplay. And that's it. Although this game gives you some replayability. Endings are varied depending on which factions you supported, so you could play it few more times to see what you get. Sandbox is there just for those completionists who wants to see their smithy built up and upgraded to the best possible stage, but nothing else. With all that being said, please raise up for the final verdict. My dear battle brothers and sisters, after over 6 hours of gameplay I pronounce this game as worthy of your time, although I would wait for a sale as this game feels tad overpriced and would recommend it when it drops someplace around 10 credits. Other than that, congratulations to Pirojok Studio on releasing a nice little game that can keep you occupied for a couple of hours and scratch that management simulator itch you have been feeling. Thank you very much for attending this trial and hopefully we will see each other at the next one. In the meantime, the Emperor protects!